Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to discuss a poem by John Keats that is Ode to Autumn or you can say only to Autumn. It is a poem written by John Keats in 1819 and it was published in 1820. So nearly about 200 years ago. In This is a poem that is considered to be the finest and perfect poem of John Keats and it was also the last major lyric poem that John Keats wrote. It was published along with the other six or other five words which are very well known. So let us move into the text of the poem. It is perfect both in imagery and in rhythm. So the first stanza. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun. The poet here describes the season and the season is obviously the autumn. It is it is a season of mist. That means at that time the environment becomes foggy and it is a season of mellow fruitfulness. Mellow fruitfulness means fruit that appear or that the season produces are very sweet and it is also the bosom friend of the maturing sun so bosom friend means very close friend and maturing sun maturing sun you can say when the sun is on the top of our head or because at that time the sun shines very clearly very profoundly Conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that the, that round the thatch eaves run. So the season is plotting that means making a plan with the maturing sun how both of them both of them can somehow make the trees bear fruit. So the tree that the poet is referring to is a vine tree and he thinks that both the sun and the season the weather they plan to load the vine trees with fruits and the vine trees grow in the thatch eaves thatch eaves means the v-shaped roof of the small cottages that uh, there are in the england their roofs are of V shape because there you know happen there happens lots of snowfall that is why their roofs are V shaped to bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core so the season the weather and its surroundings all these help the trees to bear fruit and also to overbear overbear fruits that is why he is saying that to bend with apples the most cottage trees so the season will give the trees so much fruit that the tree will bend bend down and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core that means no fruit will be left unripe all the fruits will be ripe and not only the upper portion but also the inner portion of the fruit will be ripen to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel swell means to make it healthy to swell to make it larger okay so the gourd will be larger and the plump and plump the hazel shells plump also means the same thing making it healthy making it bear fruit bear kernel in it with a sweet kernel that means the hazel shells will bear within them a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees and this season also helps to set budding budding they will set budding because after that the insects the butterflies and the bees will come to the buddings to collect honey until they think warm days will never cease 
for summer has overbrimmed their clammy shells so the bees until the bees think that the warm days will never cease warm days the days of the autumn because in that season the season helps them to collect the honey and summer days has never ceased they will think because they will collect they will be collecting the honeys for lot of days because from the summer they have started to collect and till autumn they are still collecting and their clammy shells that means their honey the shells where they collect their honey so those places those cells will overbrim that means it is already fulfilled it is overloaded and it can bear no more honey so they will think that warm days will never cease second stanza who hath not seen thee of the midday store sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor so who hath not seen thee oft amid the store oft means here often so everyone everyone has seen you in thy store this is a rhetorical question that implies yes or no so who hath not seen thee oft amid the store this is the literally literal meaning of this line is who has not seen the often amid the store amid means in in thy store store means abundance abundance or plenty plentifulness so autumn is plentiful autumn is bountiful it gives us a lot of things that is why it is abundant it is plentiful and everyone everyone has been the witness of autumn's store autumn's abundance and sometimes whoever seeks abroad that means whoever going abroad for any job or for any 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 work they can find the sitting careless on a granary floor granary floor you know after uh, reaping the grains it is kept in a granary so it is kept on a ground then you that is autumn autumn is here personified as a woman a woman who reaps crops such a woman is sitting careless careless means carefree she is not worried about anything in life so the season autumn is conceived in such a manner that is it is like a woman who is very carefree who has no tension who has no worry and she is resting on a granary floor thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind so the winnowing wind wind means the wind that blows and it blows away many things from the ground thy hair soft lifted so it is a very like a breeze like a breeze it blows the wind blows and it lifts your hair very softly or on a half reaped furrow sound asleep or either the personified autumn the woman she is asleep asleep on a ground of which the half of the ground or the half crops of the ground has already been reaped that means the crops has been cut so while cutting or while reaping the crops she is somehow tired and fall asleep and she is uh, in the next line the poet says drowsed with the fume of poppies that means poppies is a kind of tree that produces very enchanting perfume enchanting scent and with the scent of this poppies it is a kind of drug that drowses anyone it can drowse anyone so while she was reaping the crops and she, she got the scent and the perfume of the fume of poppies and 
she fell asleep while thy hook spears the next swath and all its twined flowers thy hook means supposedly supposedly it is referring to the sickle that with the help of which she reaps the crops so thy sickle spears that means leaves the next swath and all its twined flowers so there is flowers or poppies maybe of poppies or any other crops and those crops or those flowers are speared that means they are left yet to be cut and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook now gleaner like a gleaner so gleaner means one who collects the reaped crops so there is one there is a there is an image of a woman who reaps the crops and there is a there is an image of another person probably a man who is a gleaner so gleaner means who gathers or collects those crops and bears it carries it to the granary or to home so like a gleaner the autumn keeps its footsteps steady it is obviously a comparison comparison with a gleaner who carries the collected crops on his head and walks across a brook brook means a small river or stream or by a cider press with patient look thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours so cider press is cider press is a machine from where apple juice is extracted and there he with patient look he watches the last oozings hours by hours so oozings of the apple juice oozing means the last drops that fall on the ground from that machine the last drops of the apple juice so as he is thirsty he looks at the oozings of the apple extraction the extraction of apple juice hours by hours now the third stanza where are the songs of spring i where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too this is a very confident assertion the poet asserts that where are the songs of spring so it is the time of autumn therefore there is no song of spring there is no charm like spring in the air still the poet's point is that think not of them thou hast thy music too so if at the time of autumn there is no song of spring there is no such happiness or enjoyment or pleasure like spring though autumn is not so beautiful as spring but the point is that it has its beauties it has its music too so the charm of itself the charm of the season autumn itself is very unique and different that from that of spring maybe spring is superior but the autumn has its own charm that is why the poet says think not of them thou hast thy music too not only spring has its music but the autumn too has its music while bird clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue bird clouds that means the clouds that obstruct or hinder the sun to penetrate to the through the clouds so that bloom the soft dying day that cloud makes the dying day the dying sun bloom like a flower so the dying sun the clouds when they appear before the dying sun the setting sun it feels like the something is blooming the like a flower blooms in the morning it also happens the same thing with the dying sun 
and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue and the dying sun's rays and the hindrance of the clouds makes a good combination and it falls on the stubble plains stubble plains means the land where the crops has been already reaped and the remaining portions are on the ground it is called stubble plains and that stubble pin uh, you know luminous has a luminous hue luminous rosy hue when this happens then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river shallows these shallow trees are actually a traditional symbol of death we can also say that it is willow shallows or willows they are traditional symbol of death or sorrow so the gnats gnats uh, means more kind of mosquito or any small insect they mourn they their song is in a kind of lamenting tone as the river willow or the willow that grow behind beside the river are symbols of death and sorrow so these mm, gnats are also mourning born aloft or sinking as the light wind leaves or dies so this happens or the singing or the mourning of the gnats appear when the wind blows or when the wind dies so when the wind blows the mourning of the insects of these gnats are heard and when the wind dies that means no wind blows the lamenting sound the singing of the gnats also dies they sinks we mm, that cannot be heard anymore and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly barn lambs you know sheep small sheep they loud bleat their sound is called bleating so this they bleat from hilly barn hedge cricket sing and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden crop so hedge crickets is a uh, insect they also sing at the when the evening falls and the red breast red breast is a kind of bird whose body is kind of red color so he it also whistles from a garden cropped and gathering swallows twitter in the sky and swallow is a kind of bird they are twittering or they are gathering is also heard by the poet or by the poetic persona so at the end of the poem we see that there are lots of sounds the sounds are all of natural insects or animals they make sound they make a harmony in the end of the poem these sounds of the birds and animals also refer to the season autumn as it is the time of autumn and all these sounds of birds and animals can be heard in the time of autumn thus the poem ends with the animals sound and the sounds of the birds of the season autumn